you all right guys so today we're going to be doing beef ribs we've got a huge rack of ribs these are 3.4 kilos i got these from john davidson's butchers online so let's get them out pat them dry okay so first and foremost the most important top tip to start off with is get yourself a decent rack now these have got quite a bit of intramuscular fat it can all depend on the difference in the cow you know what it's been fed on how it's been reared as to the quality of the meat just going to trim that bit off now i'm not going to take this off a lot of people do there is a silver skin under that which is going to make that pull in a lot more personally i like to leave it on fat is flavor unless it's like super thick and super hard i leave it on and in this case it's not so bad okay so we're going to go with our binder today i'm using this this is awesome stuff rapeseed oil smoked truffle infused you can't go wrong with that you can use worcestershire sauce you name it you can use it and you're just going to put a bit of this on get that nicely evenly spread over don't want a thick layer of it that really does smell good so the other thing i don't bother doing and that's on these especially don't take the membrane off it helps hold them together you don't want these falling apart part of doing these is you know it's that end result being able to serve up those big ribs on their own they look awesome like that we're going to keep this nice and simple as a good friend of mine tom pascucci in america likes to say we're just going to go with some salt i've got some larry's salt and also some coarse black pepper okay so as i say i'm going to use this larry's salt you don't have to use this you could just use standard salt we're just going to go also don't forget those sides then what we're going to do, we're going to go with a nice heavy coating of coarse black pepper. And really go heavy on this, it's not going to hurt at all. Also helps with the bark. As I say, real heavy with the pepper. You want to pat that in. Don't try and rub it in because you'll just rub that off. A bit more. This is known as the Jacob's Ladder, so it's known as the full rack because it's got the four bones. A lot of people say the free rack, you tend to get a lot more of a better result. Personally, I find it doesn't really matter too much. If you're getting a decent quality rack, it doesn't matter whether it's the free or four bone, to be honest. I mean, here in the UK, a lot of our stuff is purely grass fed. The more grass fed it is, the less intramuscular fat it tends to have. So it all depends on the diet of the cow, how it's been reared, all that stuff. So we're just going to leave them for a good 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to run at 275, chuck these on. Now, if I was putting these in an offset, this thicker side, I would face towards the oncoming heat source. But because we're running on the pellet smoker, I'm just going to put them on the top shelf. As I say, you can go really heavy on the salt and pepper on this because they are a huge rack of meat. Just showing you what it looks like after we've let them sit there for a good 20 minutes just to let that rubber deer. Nice and simple, salt and pepper and you are ready to go. We'll catch you on the grill, guys. Let's go. So let's get these on. As I say, got a nice big drip tray. What I didn't say was I haven't seasoned the underside. I'm just not gonna bother. I just don't see the point in doing that, to be honest. We give them a good hour, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so another top tip, get yourself a sprayer bottle. You can spray with anything really. You could just have water, you could have apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar. You could even use beef stock. You know, it's endless what you can use. You're just trying to keep that outer layer nice and wet so it doesn't dry up and go crispy. But we're gonna have a look now. We're three hours into this. Literally all I've done is chucked some other food on for another video. Had a quick look earlier and they were looking fine. Forgot to record it, but never mind. So here we are, three hours in, they're looking good starting to get a slight little pull on the bone i can feel around there that's not drying out too bad so what you're wanting you're wanting the, the fats to render down and for you to be able to press on it without getting too much stuck to you so the crust hasn't formed fully yet it is getting there and it is actually looking all right i'm just going to spritz this bit here just along that edge and around there around those edges and that's it really. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to just keep going with that. We're gonna let them rock another good two hours and then have another look at them, see how we're getting on with them then. But yeah, they're looking good. They're gonna be good. Cannot wait. Nom, nom, nom. Okay, so we're now at the five and a half hour mark. We've got really good bark. The fat's all rendering down. Absolutely perfect. Starting to get a bit of shrinkage from the bone there. We have been sitting at 
275 Fahrenheit the whole way through this cook. This is just a waiting game on these, but it is what it is. So we're gonna get these off, wrap them up, get them back on to finish them off. Okay, so as I say, these beef ribs have been in about five and a half hours now. They're pretty much at the stall. We're gonna wrap them in butcher paper. You can wrap them in tin foil. It's up to you. You know, there's different ways of doing it. If you wrap in tin foil, you can lose the bark. You're less likely to lose the bark if you use butcher paper. What we got here is all the drippings from this. I've just added, because we just grilled up an A5 Wagyu steak and I had some drippings left. So the fact that rendered down out of that steak, I've just put in this, which I will put in here. Normally I just put a bit of beef tallow, lard, beef dripping as it's known in the UK, as a wrap. But what we do now, we just get the butcher paper. The great thing about cooking beef ribs is if you're wanting to do a brisket and you're a bit scared and worried, they are super forgiving. So if you want to have a play and you've not done brisket before, I'd definitely recommend doing beef ribs first. They're very similar in the texture and flavor as well. So much more forgiving. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go fat side down. And also what you've got to remember is if you're wrapping in tin foil, to lay it not on the bones. So the bones, because what will happen is the bones are pierced through the tin foil, make a hole, all the juices then fall out and then you're gonna, you could dry it out. So just be wary of that. So what we're gonna do, get this golden juice, pour it all over the top. Well, this is actually on, over the ribs, rib side up. What we're gonna do, wrap over like that. Wrap over like that. I'm gonna double wrap. Fold them over. Fuck, tuck that back under there. So you wanna get it as tight as possible. Fold that over like that. Yeah, just pretend you're wrapping a Christmas present. We're gonna put these back on the smoker. We're gonna ramp it up now to about 350 degrees Celsius. We're then gonna whack the smoker up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for as long as it takes for these to probe like butter. Okay, so butcher paper is more forgiving in the respect of it's tougher, less likely to pierce like tinfoil. I have got the bones down now, so I'm actually meat side up, fat side up. We're gonna put these in the middle at the top, and as I say, we're gonna now whack that up to 350. Now I'm not going for any particular temperature at all. I'm just going for when they probe like butter. I'll then take them out, rest them for as long as possible. So I know it's hard after you've taken all that time to cook that, you really wanna get into them and eat them. Just please don't, just take that extra time. Sit back, wait, have a beer, don't know, cup of tea, coffee, whatever you do. Chill out, let them rest. Anyway. We're now at the two hour mark of being wrapped. So let's have a look now. Okay, there is a little bit of resistance. There's none there. Mm, tiny, tiny bit of resistance. Just so you can see for temp, we are at 196 Fahrenheit. So it's not far away in respect of when people normally take them off. I just want to get them pushed past that bit so that they're proper tender like butter. See you in a bit, guys. Okay, so we're now at the eight hour mark. Just gone, just like 10 minutes past. So eight hours, 10 minutes. Just gonna check it now. Yep, we're there. That is now probing absolutely like butter. We're there, but just for you guys to see what temp we're at, we'd be over the 200 mark. Yeah, it's about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 98 degrees Celsius there. So as I say, you've really got to wait and let them rest. That's just all part of it. These are going to be super succulent, fall apart, melt in your mouth, beefy, salty, peppery goodness. So the best thing to, to do would be to put that in a cooler or something like that. I mean, if you've got a master bilk, you could put that in there you know, hot hold it for overnight if you needed to. Okay, so after a long cook and a long rest, we let these rest for two hours. Like I say, it's really good if you can just allow that rest time to be as long as possible. It makes all the difference. So let's get these bad boys out. There's a lot of juice. Oh yeah. 
smell is amazing. Still got the bark on there due to wrapping in the butcher paper. Like I say, if you use tin foil, it can tend to get rid of that bark and you don't really want that. <laughs> By putting them in a wrap, you're just trying to get that rendering down just to finish off, just to get that to the last point of call where everything's rendered right down. You slice into them, they're super juicy, super, super tender. So we'll slice this rib. So, let's take the end rib off just to show you. I mean, we, we could go for the middle rib, but look at that, absolutely super juicy, super tender. Great bark, awesome smoke ring. I mean, absolutely super tender. Pull apart, melt in the mouth. Mm, super beefy. You just cannot go wrong with this. And they're so forgiving as well. So if you are like, like I said earlier, if you really want to get to grilling something low and slow, like a brisket, this would definitely be the way forward. Mm, mm, mm. You got that saltiness, you got the pepper. Doesn't overpower it, like I say. Absolutely melt in your mouth. Goodness, right there. <laughs> Try them, guys. You'll like them. Trust me. I'm not going to squeeze it, but I mean, tell me that's not juicy, fall apart, melt in your mouth. Absolutely. Spot on. Bones just falling out, clean as a whistle. Get trying this first if you're new to barbecue and low and slow. If you like the video, please remember to subscribe. It doesn't cost a penny and it helps us massively as a channel. And remember, go and cook something exceptional. See you when I see ya. Cheers, guys. Oh, mate, look at it. Look at that bark. Just look, fall apart. Beefy goodness right there. Mm, 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 mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. oh, yes.